Okay, so you have learned what is log, what is lawn. You have also know how to handle log and lawn to linearize, to get straight line equation, to find gradient, y-intercept, and also how to handle prefix, decimal point, sig fig. Okay, hopefully you know that. In this video, we are going to talk about uncertainties in log and lawn. Okay, so... So we know how to deal with log and lawn, but uncertainty, eh? uncertainty how? Ah? So basically, I'm going to write down here our purpose of this video. Purpose is to determine the uncertainty for, let's say, lawn x or the uncertainty for log x. Okay, where x is whatever we measure. Lah. It can be r, radius, it can be t, period, it can be anything. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, step one. I will tell you what is the brute force method. So, there are two methods. Okay. Method one. This is the uh, what I like to call the brute force or max-min method. So what you will do is you will take ln x, the largest possible value of ln x, minus, okay, I'm just going to write down this one first, hang on. Maximum, minimum, over 2. This is the first method. So, for example, if you want to find the uncertainty of ln x, you can take half, multiply by, the largest possible value of ln x minus the smallest possible value of ln x divided by 2. Same thing for log. So this log is base 10. So we do the same thing. Largest value of log x. Find the range. This is uh, also called the half range method. Half the range. So if let's say you don't remember any identities for uncertainty, fractional uncertainty, percentage uncertainty, you also don't remember already. Lah. Use half the range. Okay, You can always find the maximum and the minimum value. Let me give you one example. Okay, so same example that we've been using so far. So R has no uncertainty. So I press so many times now. This is 8.111. We don't have to bother so much about this anymore. We're going to now examine this log T. So we need to find the value of log T and then plus minus the uncertainty for log T. Okay. So I think I can find log T pretty easily. All right. I will just take... 24 times 10 to the power of 3. Ta-da! 4.38. Okay. And then we plus minus. So what do we plus minus? So you could use half the range method. So the uncertainty of log t in seconds will be equal to half. Maximum possible value of log t. You look at this one, no? 24 plus 4 minus smallest possible value of log t. Uh, 24 minus 4. But I forgot to times 10 to the power of true. So br, hang on, something like this. Okay, don't forget your prefix. Huh? So this will be log 24 plus 4, 10 to the power of 3. Okay. Well, I miss this one a lot to press. Ah, uh, yeah, lo, like that, lo. And you have to press for every single value in your table, okay? And your table will consist of six values. So you have to do this thing six times. So the first one is 24 plus 4, which is 28 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay. Minus log 20 times 10 to the power of 3. Ta-da! Divide by 2. Ta-da! 0 0.07. So it will be good to keep 2. 2 at 1 SF. 
Uh, for paper 5, they allow a mixture of SF, but personally, I think one is cool and one is easier to draw when it comes to the error bar. So I'm sticking to one, okay? You should be watching this video after you try some paper 5 question that has no log and non, just normal linear equation or fractions. Okay, so this method one, half the range. Newsflash, I don't like this method. This law of working. Do you need to show the working? No, but you need to repeat this for six different values. And for me, I might make a calculation error because more things to calculate, more, more pain. So the second method is using identities. Okay, so depending on, so method two, identities. Depending on your appetite for calculus and your ability to derive equation or memorize identities and use them, you may or may not like this method. I like this method because the working is shorter, less things to press, less error to make for me. Lah, okay, but certain people, they prefer this kind of fail-safe method because this half the range, uh, I'm just going to put this one and tell you something. If let's say uh, they jump you and they give you some weird, weird function, uh, arctangent, uh, not that they're going to give you that, but let's say they give you a very strange function. Always applicable. Can use in all types of functions or equations. Any type can use. This is like the, the Chinese cleaver, you know, in your kitchen. Is it the best tool for the job? Not always, but can use all the time. All right, so I prefer to use identities because they're faster. But you have to know the identity. Okay, so I'm going to derive the identity now for you. Okay, and I, the derivation will look like this. Okay, so I'm going to let, or rather, let, I'm going to start with log base AX. Why did I start with log base A? Because I want a general identity that I can use for base 10 and also can use for base E. Okay, so I'm going to let this part, this base here, A, B, anything that I can substitute later. Okay, all right. So I need to convert this to something that I can differentiate. So the only differentiable log so far is ln. So I want to convert this whole thing to ln. So basically, I'm going to change this to log base E X over log base ea i'm changing converting the base a to e okay all right so after i convert log ex is non x log ea is non a okay and this is log a x now, I will differentiate both sides with respect to x. So basically, I'm going to d dx this thing. d dx, d dx, d dx, Dexter. Okay, so d dx. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to put a d dx here and a d dx here, like log ax is equal to d dx ln x over ln a. Okay, a is a number, it's a value, it can be 10, it can be 2.7, or in maths, it can be any other thing. So ln a is a constant, so I'm going to take it out. Okay, so I have 1 over ln a here, and then I am d dxing or I am differentiating ln x. What do you get when you differentiate ln x, ah, boys and girls? So those of you who do maths, you should know when we differentiate ln x, we will get 1 over x. Nice. I like nice, small, cute, neat integration. Okay, la, teacher, what about the left? The left looks like a nightmare. Okay, don't worry. We do this physics trick. Ah, this physics trick, we will say... For small changes, 
d dx is approximately equal to delta over delta x, meaning uncertainty, meaning small change, small changes. Okay, so I'm going to substitute this one by uncertainty of log base a number x divided by uncertainty in x. So whatever that was here is now this one. Okay, for small changes. All right, so then this delta x, I can shift over. I can shift over, oh my God, I copy first, not only I shift. So the uncertainty of log AX over uncertainty of X is 1 over ln A times 1 over X. Okay, so what we can do now is we can move this delta X over. So uncertainty of log base A number X is equal to 1 over ln A, uncertainty in X over X. I bring the del X upwards. Ah, this one I translate to here. And del X over X is uncertainty in X over X. Okay, so there are two cases of A for our syllabus. I'm going to box this one because this is the general identity. Okay, it doesn't matter what A is like, it can be 10, it can be E, it can be 16, it can be 47, whichever lah, pick your number. Okay. But let's say right now I want to generalize, I mean I want to do it, use it specifically for log. So if A is equal to 10, so now we are looking at uncertainty in log X. This will be equal to 1 over log 10 uncertainty in x over x okay so whatever you were uncertain about when you calculate x it will manifest as this uncertainty fractional but please remember because the base will scale your graph so this a was is equal to 10 and we substitute this here okay second option change card. Ding, ding, ding. If A is equal to natural log, ah, so now on this side it will be log EX, which is ln X. So uncertainty for ln X will be equal to 1 over ln E. Hmm. So if you remember our previous video, ln E is actually 1. So I like this one, because it's got one uncertainty in x over x. So ln e is 1. This whole thing become 1. So finally, I will have the uncertainty in ln x is equal to uncertainty in x over x. Wow. So I have this. If let's say I'm dealing with base 10, or I have this. Now, if you ask me, these identities are not hard to prove and also not hard to remember la, because I understand the proof. So I tend to use identities more, okay? But if you prefer to use the first method, which is max spin, it's okay. Let us test out this identity method for the equation ahead, okay? So we lock, ah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna steal this, okay? So you can remember the general one, or you can remember both of these. Because physics only got 10 and natural law. Like it makes no sense to do anything else. Okay, let's try method two. Okay, we're going to try method two now. So instead of using half max mean, what I can say is the uncertainty of log t, I'll zoom in a bit, will be equal to 1 over ln 10, bracket, the uncertainty, which is 4, so 4 over 24. And this is infinitely easier to press on my friend Casio, the calculator. 
1 over ln 10 multiplied by 4 over 24. Ta-da! 0 0.07. You round it to 2 SF, I mean, sorry, 1 SF, you will get the same because this is uncertainty, so it should be 1 SF. So it's either you are familiar and you are comfortable with using the identity. If not, you can use the max mean method. So this is method two. This is method one. Use whichever that you are comfortable and confident. Calculate with confidence. All right. You. <laughs> so in this video, I showed you the derivation. Okay. We use some calculus, and then there are two cases. So if you want to use the identity method, make sure you know both. Okay? Um, or you know the general one that you substitute your A and simplify. Lah. Up to you, lah. depending on where your brain can start. My brain can start here. Okay? Next. If you are not comfortable with identity, you can use this half max mean method. Okay? So this is how you find uncertainty for log and ln. Not just for table, but for calculation as well. So maybe after you draw your graph and you find your y-intercept and you find your gradient, maybe you're asked to find the value of a constant and also its related uncertainty. So if you are still using log and ln, you could use this technique. Or if you're not sure, method one is always the safety method. So basically, if you see some weird equation, you go like, you know what, guys, I don't even know whether the identity can use or not. I might as well just max and min. You still get max. Okay? All right. So that's it for uncertainty in log and non, with including its derivation.